What am I looking out for? Our parents, dummy. You want some advice? When you grow up, don't try to get into the FBI. Never mind the lookout, just close the door. When it comes to sitcoms revolving around family and lighthearted comedy, The Brady Bunch is one such series that graced American TV in the late 1960s and early 1970s. As the poster model of a wholesome family, you'd be surprised to know that a lot of it's not as polished and perfect behind the scenes, contrary to what most people know. For today's video, we'll let you in on the times the Brady Bunch crew gave a little extra. As successful as it is, there's still a lot of happenings off camera that contributed to how the show developed. So if you're curious to know what happened, then make sure you keep watching until the end. Created by Sherwood Schwartz, The Brady Bunch is an American sitcom on ABC that ran from September 1969 to March 1974 and consists of 117 episodes in its five-season course. The show revolves around the blended family of the Bradys, and even though it wasn't considered hugely successful during its original run on TV, the series became a series favorite for generations to come. The Brady Bunch is made up of Mike Brady, a widower architect who has three sons who marry a widow named Carol Martin, who has three daughters of her own. Mike's sons are Greg, Peter, and Bobby, while Carol's daughters are Marcia, Cindy, and Carol. With their new blended family, we get to see how they adjust to having new siblings, surroundings, and even gender rivalries as the family navigates through life. It's pretty common for shows to derive inspiration from real-life stories, but show creator Sherwood Schwartz got his inspiration from a newspaper clipping about a certain statistic he read in the Los Angeles Times. It said that year, 1965, 31% of all marriages involved people who had a child or children from a previous marriage, Sherwood explained at the time. It was just a statistic, but to me, it indicated a remarkable sociological change in our country. 31% is approximately one-third of all marriages. That's a huge statistic. From there, he conceived the idea for a series he called Yours and Mine, pitching it to three major networks but sadly getting turned down each time, until three years later. The release of the film Yours, Mine and Ours played a huge role in pushing forward Schwartz's pitch because the film tells the story of a widow with eight children who married a single dad who has ten kids. The film starred Lucille Ball and Henry Fonda and became a box office hit, which is why ABC took a sudden interest in Schwartz's script. Back then, the script was still titled The Bradley Brood. Like many other shows, The Brady Bunch has its share of facts and trivia a lot of people don't seem to know about. And here are a few of them. Can you imagine renowned actor Gene Hackman portraying the role of Mike Brady? We sure can't, but apparently the said actor was on the run for playing the role. Still, it's pretty hard to imagine a tough guy like him in a sitcom, but Sherwood Schwartz admitted that he had him in mind when they were looking for their Mike Brady. Schwartz elaborated on it in his book Brady, 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 revealing how he was about to invite Hackman for an interview, but it was Paramount who decided against it. The reason was simply because Hackman's TVQ rating was pretty low at the time, despite the actor being nominated for his performance in Bonnie and Clyde. For those of you who don't know, a TVQ rating is a ratio used by TV executives to determine if the audience knows an actor or not. Simply put, if his number is pretty low, then he's not that popular in the viewer's eyes. In the end, they all decided to cast Robert Reed for the role of Mike Brady, seeing how he was already under contract with Paramount. Plus, it helped that he had already garnered a following thanks to his role on the legal drama series, The Defenders. Now, would you consider that a loss for Gene Hackman? Not really, because the man went and made a name for himself with a lot of commercial hits under his belt like The French Connection, Superman, Hoosiers, Get Shorty, and The Royal Tenenbaums. Similar to Gene Hackman, Schwartz also had a different leading lady in this family series. It was supposed to be the comedic actress Joyce Bulafont. In fact, the actress was already booked and signed to play the role. Bulafont was even used in the screen tests, and the younger actresses were also cast to look like her. So what actually happened? According to the actress, she was already signed, sealed, and delivered 
to play the role of Carol Brady, but Sherwood Schwartz walked to her one time while she was trying costumes to deliver the devastating blow. You see, her being cast out of the show was directly linked to the studio casting Ann B. Davis as the wacky housekeeper of the Bradys. In his concept of the Bradys, Carol Brady was supposed to play the wacky mom type, similar to Lucille Ball's character in Yours, Mine, and Ours, but the casting of Davis was more than enough to make up for the wackiness he needed. Thus, they wanted a down-to-earth mom to balance it out, and that's where Florence Henderson came into the picture. It still came as a shock to Bullifant when she heard the news of her being replaced on the show. After all, the little girls were cast to look like her, but thankfully, she didn't dwell on this drawback because the actress went and starred in another sitcom classic, The Mary Tyler Moore Show. Now, let's take a look at the darker secrets behind the wholesome show, wherein the Brady Bunch crew gave a little extra, starting with the show's eldest daughter. For many young male viewers, Marsha was the epitome of an ideal woman. Little did they know that this very idea caused the actress so much distress that she turned to substance abuse. Maureen McCormick, the actress who played Marsha Brady, was extremely pressured, not only to play the role of the eldest daughter, but also to meet the expectations of Hollywood. As a result, the actress turned to cocaine to cope with her struggles, which wasn't exactly the best coping mechanism. Her substance use was the result of much internal turmoil for the young actress, but it had a lot to do with her family history too which she revealed in her memoir, Here's the Story, Surviving Marsha Brady and Finding My True Voice. In it, she wrote about how she was distressed upon learning that her grandmother died of syphilis while admitted to a mental institution and how her mother contracted STIs in the womb, which also added to her stress. To be fair, McCormick's mother got treated and never passed the disease on to her children. But that fact alone was enough to heighten the actress's anxiety and depression, which drove her to the edge. I sought refuge in seemingly glamorous cocaine dens above Hollywood, McCormick wrote in her memoir. I thought I would find answers there, while in reality I was simply running farther from myself. From there I spiraled downward on a path of self-destruction that cost me my career and very nearly my life. The actress also revealed how her addiction got to the point wherein she would sleep with her cocaine dealer in exchange for more of it. She even admitted how she would do every last flake if there was coke, and it doesn't matter if she loses sleep in the following days. To say that her addiction lost her many opportunities would be an understatement. The actress even appeared at important meetings with no sleep and obviously high. One such meeting that lost her a great opportunity because of her day's state was to star in Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. During the meeting, the actress was so high that Steven Spielberg just handed her an orange and called it a day. But that wasn't even the worst of the actress's controversies. The actress had to do these things just to keep up with Hollywood's pressures. If you wanna know more, then keep on watching. Being in the spotlight can be hard, especially for the ladies, and Maureen McCormick felt it during her stint as Marsha Brady. Aside from her cocaine addiction, the actress also opened up in her memoir about how she had not one but three abortions at the ages of 18, 19, and 20. Even to this day, this topic is considered sensitive, and for McCormick to do it several times at such a young age just goes to show what addiction did to her. She admits in her memoir that she had been careless and desperate to get it. As if having an abortion and cocaine addiction weren't bad enough, McCormick also developed an eating disorder, bulimia to be specific, because she was pressured to stay in shape, for which her character was praised. Like abortion, this too was taboo during her time, so it was kept under wraps. And it wasn't until Karen Carpenter's death hit headline news in 1983 that it shone a light on such a touching issue. But until then, Maureen McCormick had to deal with this issue behind closed doors. Another one of the actress's bad decisions was dished out by her co-star, Susan Olson, who played her younger sister, Cindy. According to Olsa, McCormick has quite the naughty pair of hands, shoplifting all the time between working on set. And during the times that she got caught, McCormick would pin the blame on whoever she was with at the time of the crime. 
The youngest Brady brother didn't emerge from Hollywood unscathed, and the young Mike Lookinland, who played Bobby, turned to alcoholism. Playing the part of Bobby meant the actor had to work long hours, never really experiencing what it's like to have a childhood, which was why he wanted to experience his real childhood in his 20s. The problem for me was, I lived my childhood in my 20s, Lookinland said during an Oprah interview. You should really try to live your childhood when you're a child because if you do it when you're 26, it can be dangerous. Fortunately for him, he was able to sober up in the nick of time after spending two decades in film production. Lookinland decided to leave the limelight for good and spent the rest of his days living a peaceful life with his family, making concrete countertops. Speaking of anger, some may assume that he also channeled his anger into his work, to be specific over storylines that didn't appeal to him. Mike Brady may be level-headed, but his actor Robert Heed is not, and he often clashed with Schwartz about storylines and visual gags written in the series. You see, Robert Reed was a Shakespearean-trained actor and preferred a more serious approach to the storylines. At least that's what Schwartz told ABC News in an interview. Even the showrunner was aware that Reed was a good actor, but he also felt that he wound up on a show that he didn't want to do in the first place, and it became more and more difficult for him. This wasn't a one-time thing. His displeasure over these scripts carried on through the whole duration of the show, and ultimately, Schwartz decided to just write him off during the finale. The storyline for the last episode is about Greg's upcoming graduation and how he had orange hair after some pranks. Reed didn't like the story and demanded it be rewritten, threatening that he wouldn't appear if they didn't do it. Well, you could say that the higher-ups called his bluff, so in the end his character's lines were divided between his wife Carol and Alice which resulted in an absent Mike Brady during the show's grand finale. If you think the cast had it bad on the show, wait until you hear what their furry friend suffered from next. What would a model family be if they didn't have a beloved pet? For the Bradys, they had the family dog, Tiger. This little pooch met his grisly end one fateful night after wrapping up filming for their episode, Kachu. Since they're done for the day, Tiger's trainer led him out on the Paramount lot for his nightly exercise when a careless driver ran over and hit him, killing Tiger on the very same night. With several scenes left to film, his trainer spent all night frantically scouring every dog shelter for a dog that looked similar to him. Fortunately enough, they were able to find a look-alike. But here was the problem. The pooch was untrained and had trouble following directions. It didn't help that the little canine was scared of all the lights and noise. As a last-ditch effort, the crew decided to just nail his collar on the floor for him to stay put, just as the scene played out where the boys bid him a tearful farewell. As for his doghouse, it became a staple on set, and thankfully, Tiger wasn't a series regular. He only appeared whenever he was essential to the storyline. What would the Brady Bunch be without the wise-cracking and lively Alice? Ann Davis brought life to the show in ways we cannot describe, and mind you, she was already an esteemed icon by then, with a few Emmy nominations and wins under her name. It's too bad that the actress suffered one of the worst ways to go, a freak accident. Back in 2014, Davis was in the bathtub when she fell and hit her head, causing a subdural hematoma. Unlucky for the 88-year-old actress, everything progressed quickly, and after she lost consciousness, she passed soon after. At least we still have her immortalized as the wise-cracking housekeeper in the Brady Bunch to keep her memory alive. As the youngest Brady girl, Susan Olsen was adorable with her real-life lisp and blonde locks, often parted in pigtails. Well, what can we say? Hair color plays a huge role in family dynamics, with men sporting darker brown colors and the ladies with their striking blonde heads, this would have been the ideal scenario had Olsen been blonde enough. Although the actress was a natural blonde, the studio deemed it not blonde enough, which was why the then eight-year-old actress was forced to bleach her hair weekly. It got so bad to the point that the little girl's hair started falling into clumps. Contrary to Olsen, her co-actor Mike Lookinland, who plays Bobby Brady, had to give up his natural strawberry blonde hair 
in exchange for a dark brown color. These kinds really gave in a little more extra for their role, no? This is why we weren't too surprised to know many of them suffered through adulthood because of the requirements and pressures of the industry. Now back to Susan Olsen. Well, would you believe this innocent looking actress grew up to raise weeds? That she did. To be fair, Olsen never really explored using drugs or weeds, but she did admit to becoming somewhat of a dealer later on in her life, all thanks to her then husband. When she made an appearance on the Australian news, she shared about how she and her then husband grew cannabis hydroponically though she was quick to add that she never enjoyed smoking it because it made her feel paranoid. On the other hand, she really did enjoy growing it simply because she loves gardening and enjoyed how wonderfully fascinating the plant was. Similar to his co-stars, Barry Williams, who played the eldest Brady boy, also got started on his vices pretty early. On screen, many would best remember Greg Brady for his clean image, but the truth of the matter is, that Williams had already started smoking at the age of 12. And he's not just into any normal tobacco. He goes for the five fingers like most teenagers his age, which is pretty unfortunate for the production staff. One day, the young actor was enjoying his day off with his friends, smoking some cannabis, when he remembered being called back to the studio to go back to work. He relayed this story back in 2014, and looking back, he admitted how he felt regret for showing such behavior because his being high was recorded in one of the show's 1973 episodes titled Law and Disorder. He showed up on set all smiling and glassy-eyed. And if you look closely enough at the set episode, you could even see him trying to hold back his laughter. Because of his condition that day, it was said that the whole episode was rewritten just so the actor's participation would be reduced. But if you think this is the only thing questionable the actor did off camera, you're wrong. Did you know that he once took his on-screen mom, Florence Henderson, out on a date? It turns out he had the hots for the older actress. Back then, Williams was just 16 years old, but he was quite smitten with the older actress, who was 20 years his senior. In his memoir titled, Growing Up Brady, I Was a Teenage Greg, the actor talked about how his hormones got the better of him and got pretty excited, but he clarified that he didn't want to sleep with her. He just wanted to spend some time with Henderson. Of course, the older actress was also married at the time, though she did find his thoughts endearing, which is why she decided just to hang out and have dinner with him. Mind you, Williams' older brother was also present at the time and drove the actor to the location since he was too young to drive. Henderson also cleared out this piece of information that got blown out of proportion in the FAQ section on her website. In a way, she said she could call it a date, but only because the younger actor considered it as such. On her part, she had no idea that the young Barry Williams wanted to go out with her, 